Good afternoon, my friends. It's Carrie from Parton's Heritage Homestead. And I'm going to talk a little bit about starting your seeds. Um, I have noticed the last two years, I have bought plants at Lowe's, Walmart, or even our nursery, the co-ops. These plants were big, beautiful. The prices were a little high, but I thought this would be my best bet. I have a head start, put them in my garden. I'm good to go. The past two years, I have noticed with these plants, though, that I bought, I would grow big, beautiful, luscious plants. They would they would grow amazing, but their production was low. Their flowering was low, and I kept thinking there was something wrong with me. Yet the seeds that I planted are doing amazing. Some of them are still producing even this fall. It's been a, a, a gift that never ends. So there's got to be something about it. So I did some research and I realized that for the type of garden that I do, those plants are just not for me. I don't want to be able to continually feed. They are heavy, heavy feeders in fertilization. It makes sense. This is a commercial-based planting system where you buy these plants so they produce them quite quickly so they can get them out for the beginning of the spring however by the time they get to my organic garden i'm actually the the garden that actually puts them into detox they're not getting fed that heavy fertilizer they'll still grow but they don't produce like they should without the fertilizer they're used to so I'm starting from scratch. I'm starting from seed. The picture that you see right here is just a natural organic seed starting mix. All your seed starting mixes, whether it be this brand or any other brand, they are a sterile soil. They have no fertilizer. They're, they're just plain, simple soil. Fluffy, airy, leaves room for the seeds to grow. And we're starting from scratch from this point. You'll find when you get it, it is super fluffy. And one of the biggest mistakes I started when I used this was I would take it straight from this bag. I'd put it in my seed cells. I'd water it and notice that the water floated on top. After it absorbed through, my one of my biggest mistakes from that point was, okay, my soil is ready. I popped in my seeds. What I didn't know the only thing that was actually watered was the very top. There was no water throughout the rest of the soil. This stuff here is like a sponge. It takes a lot of water, basically, to start it, to get it to the moist point, just for the seeds, and you put your dome on. So I thought I would go ahead and show you. Take about half your soil. This will leave room for error, just in case. You're going to pour in your warm water and mix it. You're going to get all the dryness. Once you mix this, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But take your water and just add it to your soil. Mix it up really good like you're kneading dough or mixing up bread mixes. And just get it in there really good. You'll know if you have enough water or too much water. If you have enough and you take it and you gently squeeze it, you'll feel some moisture in it and some water but it'll be like a wrung out sponge. You want that. You just want that wrung out sponge. If you squeeze it just a little bit and you find water's dripping and oozing out of your fingers, you may need to add, and that's why I said don't use all of your soil. It leaves room for error. Add a little bit more of the dry mix to absorb that until you get that nice consistency of just a wrung out sponge. That's all you need. Make sure your soil is nice and fluffy again. Fill up your cells and then plant your seeds. Um, the Another thing that I will uh, see if I can help you with that I am actually going to try this year in my tomatoes is I'm using red solo cups. And I'm only putting my soil about halfway. Now for me, I'm not wasting seeds what I do is I count approximately how many plants I want of a certain item. I will plant one extra seed for an error seed. If one didn't germinate, then I still get that one that I wanted. And I only put two seeds per cup in here because these things do get quite big. And eventually, it's going to be one plant per cup anyways. 
The reason I'm only going halfway with the tomatoes, and if you ever notice in a bigger plant, you'll have your stems with little furs. The furs isn't actually a fur, it's actually a root. And the general rule is plant tomatoes deep for a root system. This will give it a head start. When my seedling produces, it starts getting its leaves. I want my seed, my seedling to come up over the top of this ridge. When it gets to that point, I will pull off the bottom leaves of it. I will then fill up my cup about halfway to three quarters of the way full up the stem to promote more root growth to make a stronger, better plant when I go to put it in my greenhouse. This will leave this much space for room of roots and you'll have a stronger better plant this way i'm going to try this i've seen it and i'm going to see if this works because i've always planted mine deep but i wondered if i planted them deep enough so this is a good point you can't hurt it if anything you just improve it so i'm going to do that this year i'm hoping these helped you i'll take you over to my little seedling station i have one more point what I'm trying to do is release the, to minimize the stress and bring back enjoyment in planting. There is so much information and there's probably times I know for me, I could be filled with so much information that sometimes maybe too much is not good either. I make it complicated. So I'm simplifying my gardening to make it more enjoyable. And I will go take you to my seed station and show you this area. This is me and my perfect little setup to me. My husband built this really cool stand for me for my grow light. I have nothing but, an, at that point at one time, it was a $19 shop light. I hung up chains in between the bottom stem of a screw and then hooked it into my light. I've got it pretty low so that my seedlings can get, there's our herbs. I am so happy to see this. And here's our other little babies. And that's pretty low so that they can get enough illumination for growing. I actually like this. And the other thing that I learned, it's one of those, why haven't I learned this all my life situations? Let's take an analogy of a garden for, let's example, a bean plant. We know that beans can go into the ground right after our first frost or last frost. For me, that'll be around April the 4th. So I'll probably wait about two weeks after that to make sure the soil is going to be warm enough and it's going to not freeze. So I would plant my seed into my ground, direct sowing. And I noticed something. When we direct seed, we get daylight sunshine afternoon, evening, and then it gets dark. None of those seeds are getting light 24-7. When I started learning more about lighting, it made sense when I think about that analogy about planting a seed outside. The other part of it is seedlings, when you first plant them in your soil, you don't need a light on. They only need light when they start germinating. At this point right here is when they start needing the light. You can use a heat mat. It's not absolutely necessary. Uh, it just helps in promoting germination a little bit quicker. But again, it's not necessary. You don't have to spend a fortune to grow a garden. An another thing that I'm learning is now with this light, I'm giving them like natural daylight. First thing in the morning, I'll turn my light on. I'll leave my light on for at least 12 hours, 16 hours at the most. When I go to bed at night, I turn my light off. It's a little bit healthier on the plants. They don't have to stress so much into growing. And I just, it like I said, it's one of those, why didn't I learn this sooner? But I'm glad I'm starting now and I'm sharing this information for you as well. I'm hoping this little bit of information will help you start your seeds with less stress, enjoy what you do, have fun, and know that 
not there is no cut and dry situation anywhere we all live in different zones we all live in different areas our frost dates beginnings and ends are all different we could do so much out there and kill our plants or thrive in our plants and then there's one other aspect we can do everything that we can do to be able to grow beautiful gardens and the weather can change everything and that is one thing you can't you nor I can fix just enjoy what you do enjoy the growing of it enjoy the productions of it if you make a mistake keep trying don't give up I'm on my fourth year of growing and each year I get a little better each year I learn a little more I hope this helped you God bless and have a nice evening